was your impression of the Rover sons? Oh, I loved them because they're kids. And so it was a perfect situation. I mean, they were just, they're the family I wanted. And Charlie, he was being just as flirtatious with me and I was giggling and I had a crush. I mean, here it is and there's someone other than blood that thinks I'm kind of cute and <laughs> I've never had a boyfriend and I wrote him a letter and I gave it to him and I told him that, you know, I really like you. But nothing will ever happen because I will never do anything with care of the kids. I love them too much. You know, that will never happen. But I want you to know that you're my first crush. And so she would be gone from 4 o'clock in the afternoon to like 2 in the morning. So Charlie wouldn't get in until like 6. So I would have the kids. And I would already have their baths done. And I'd have dinner for them like a nanny. And uh, I got to do that, plus they paid me to do this. Only for Charlie to charge me room and board. So there went my pay. And so he'd be sitting there and he put in this VCR and he said, are you gonna come watch this movie with me? And I said, sure, well I'd already put the kids down. So I'm sitting on the couch, he said, no, come over here. So I'm sitting there and I look up and it's porn. And I'm like, oh, I don't wanna see that. And he said, no, I want you to watch it with me. And he said, come on, you can do it. He said, won't you do it for me, sweetie? You know, he said all the right things. So I said, oh, okay. So I started watching it. He, he knows that he's been abusive. Yeah, he does, because it finally came out. And he would have different guys come over and they would watch And then they expect me to come out. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. Well, I mean, this, what can I do? He would, so once again, I don't say anything. And here I am being used, <laughs> satisfying their, their needs. And then he would want to take nude photos of me. And I was like, no, I'm not going to get naked in front of you. He said, come on, come on. Yes, you can, come on. So he was like, do you want to go out? Do you want, I'll send you back home. And I was like, no. So, okay, I would take them off and they would do these photo shoots. So, um, time went on and two o'clock comes, I hear Carol's car and I'm like, what are you doing? He said, oh, it's okay. And I said, no. He said, yeah. So Carol comes in and she says, I'm home. She said, oh yeah. She said, I like this one. Now I'm sitting over here and I'm like, I've heard of women on women, but I've never experienced it, nor have I any desire to be with another female because that is definitely, I mean, it's wrong with what I've been doing, but this is definitely wrong. I mean, here it is, a married man and a married woman. It just kept getting worse and worse. And so the photo shoots consisted of Carol, myself, Charlie, and there was always a camera person. So it got really out of hand. This happened almost a year. I said, Charlie, I don't want to do this anymore. This is not right. He says, you'll do it as long as I tell you we're going to do it. I said, I just want to go home. He says, you're not going home. So I escaped like three times and each time he'd bring me back. And he said, okay, you want to run? Get in the car, I'm going to show you something. I said, no. And so he put me in the car and he drove to my grandmother's house. Now my grandmother's house is like three houses down. And I'm sitting there in the car and he says, this is a little familiar. And I see my grandmother's house. He said, do you see that little girl? And I said, yes. And he said, who is she? I said, that's Christy. He reached in his glove compartment and got a gun. And I'm looking at him and I'm like thinking he's gonna shoot me. He said, now, run again. He says, and if you do, as I drive, I'm shooting her. 